Hi there, my name is David Smith. I'm the CTO of Quack, also chief architect of the Croquet project. What you're looking at is a system called ICE that was written in 1994 uh, uh, at Virtus Corporation and basically is the first real working prototype of what later became Croquet. The idea here was it was a shared uh, system, a, co a collaborative system. In this case you had two users that could work together. Uh, it was written and ran on Macintoshes. That irritating noise you hear is actually the other avatar that's in the space with us. And let me uh, show you him. Uh, this, the, the idea there was that you needed a noise, a sound of some sort to show where the other users were. In this case, that other avatar uh, actually had a little video screen on him so that you could uh, see who it was and they could wave and that kind of thing. Uh, the noise actually is pretty irritating so I, turned, I can turn it off. Uh, if I had another old Macintosh I would be able to demonstrate uh, him working as well. I doubt seriously I can get the video working anymore but uh, I wanted to show uh, basically where a lot of the ideas for Croquet came from. What you see over here, if you've played with croquet at all, uh, is something pretty familiar. It's uh, basically uh, what turned into the mo modern croquet windows. Um, it has the same basic interface that uh, croquet ultimately uh, showed up with. Uh, I just don't have a lot of good ideas, I guess. Anyway, the, the idea around this system is very similar to what, ha what we do in Quack Forums today. Quack Forums, by the way, is built on top of Croquet uh, and exhibits virtually all the capabilities that you see here, plus many, many more, of course. Uh, Quack Forums is a real, honest-to-goodness, killer product. This was a pure demo. But one of the things you can do is it supports drag-and-drop, so I can grab uh, an object from the desktop, in this case, I'm dropping a chart onto the window. You can see I, I can see into that window and get a sense of that information. This is just a bitmap. I, I can just draw it. In fact, I can do other things besides simple bitmaps. I'm going to grab hold of a little whiteboard application and drop it in. Let me just grab that and move it out of the way. And of course, this is a truly replicated object, uh, anything I did to this uh, would work uh, on the other users' machines as well. Um, so I can literally draw on here. Uh, it's literally a little white whiteboard app. I can select colors uh, so you can see, uh, see that. Uh, and basically do anything inside this uh, and it, of course it is totally symmetrical just like uh, croquet is today. Uh, another kind of object that you could drop into the space was uh, a 3D object and I have a little chessboard here. So I'll drop that in. And uh, you could play a game of chess with uh, your, your, your friends. Um, remember this was you know, 1994 actually had to build all these chess pieces with graph paper. Uh, literally didn't have um, a, uh, a CAD system that I could do this with uh, that, that was small enough. I was very sensitive to number of polygons as you can imagine. But you get a good sense of, uh, of what you can do here. I'm going to grab hold of uh, a picture. Let's do this one. and. There you go, hopefully. There we are. And it works just like uh, you'd expect. Of course, the big difference is when you dropped an object into a scene like this, it was automatically replicated to all the other users. Uh, the key idea, obviously, was this is a, was a totally shared reality. Everything that occurred here, applications, uh, creation of objects, uh, interaction with those objects was replicated throughout the system. What this was missing, and what Croquet has, was a, a, a really good peer-to-peer -peer replication model. Uh, in this case, for ICE, I had to basically tune and write every single little micro-application so that it did the right things. 
that proved to be extraordinarily difficult and really uh, it was pretty clear that wouldn't scale. Uh, the whole idea around croquet was to create an infrastructure that allowed basically immediate and perfect peer-to-peer -peer replicated behaviors without a whole lot of programming overhead. And that's actually what we achieved. Uh, the tea time uh, working with David Reed, actually based on David Reed's original thesis at MIT, and Andreas Robb, uh, actually takes care of a huge amount of uh, critical aspects about replicated compu computing. In fact, the, the key idea behind it is it's a deterministic uh, replicated com computation. So basically, if you have some kind of event occurring inside of a space, it's guaranteed that that event is occurring in all other spaces. So, for example, we see the little cube spinning. Uh, that cube would be spinning inside a croquet in exactly the same way in all the systems. Uh, I can do the same thing with these windows, by the way. I just give it a little spin. And, of course, in croquet, uh, those windows would be perfectly replicated. You could put the two screens side by side, and they'd be identical state. Uh, with, the, uh, with ICE, that wasn't the case. Basically, ICE had this, uh, the strange behaviors of, uh, basically, they'd get out of sync. Although, I was able to do some hacks that whatever you selected an object forced a resynchronization, so that it wasn't, a, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. Uh, the other thing is, if you notice uh, on the uh, picture here, and on the whiteboard, it's also the case, that it's the same thing on both the front and the back. Uh, the idea was that uh, users could be on either side of the window and interact with it uh, without any problem. That actually proved to be pretty nice because you could actually, um, people tend to want to face each other and work together. The, the big problem, obviously, was that these were, trans were, not, were not transparent. I think if they were transparent, that might actually be a really nice UI, except for the fact, of course, I see slightly different thing from what you do because it's a, basically a mere image. But nevertheless, uh, I thought that was pretty effective and something worth exploring again. Uh, so there it is. Um, this is basically the first, if you will, maybe the first real prototype of cro what turned into croquet. Um, there was actually an earlier version, but it was done in Virus Walkthrough, and it didn't have any behaviors associated with it. In fact, that was the one I first started talking to Alan Kay about in 1991, about three three years before this was written and uh, and viewed for the first time. Uh, so that's uh, the first piece of this. Uh, I'm actually going to do a number of videos like this. This is actually will actually wind up being the third one. The first and second. The first uh, will be uh, a video about the game Colony that I wrote, which predated this by another seven years. And then uh, a little video about Virtus Walkthrough, which uh, was actually a, one of the key ideas of using 3D for, uh, you know, real-time real -time 3D for construction and interaction. Um, so thanks very much. Goodbye.